Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live today, May the 7th, 2017. Looking at an article here from a couple of weeks ago on Sputnik, Russia's RS-28 Sarmat ICBM hypersonic disaster for U.S. Missile Defense Shield. And of course, the other day we brought out this very interesting uh, news broadcast just a couple of days ago here where we shared with you guys uh, speaking about how is, is Ukraine and North Korea decoys for a U.S. preemptive strike on Russia. Now that seemed a bit far-fetched by many when we first shared this information with you guys. Uh, but in light of the fact that this new smart bomb, or not smart bomb, but this is new ICBM, this a hypersonic ICBM that's being developed by Russia, maybe that's not so far-fetched after all a preemptive strike on Russia. And maybe in fact, Ukraine and North Korea are the decoys for this in order to be able to, not just to make a decoy, but to be able to position around Russia, all of these, uh, the THAAD system and missile defense systems around Russia so that these missiles from Russia, any of the ICBMs, not this current one here, by the way, the RS-28, because RS-28 will not be deployed till 2018, but their current ICBMs so that they cannot reach the continental United States. You have to understand, it's not that the United States necessarily would want to have a war with Russia. But because in the last administration and prior to that, especially during the Obama administration, for eight years, there was a dis de, uh, dismantling of the military and the capabilities. And also maybe for the last 20 something, I think it's 50 years almost, there's been no uh, advancement of military technology when it comes to intercontinental ballistic missiles. While Russia has been working very much on that very program. And this happens to be one of those missiles, the Russia's RS-28 Sarmat ICBM. And according to Russia, this missile here is 10 to 15 years ahead of U.S. with its cutting-edge heavy liquid propelled RS-28 Sarmat intercontinental ballistic missile uh, its, its capabilities are just far beyond that of the United States. So in 2018, when this inter intercontinental ballistic missile is to put it being put into operation, it will uh, pose a major threat for the United States and their hegemony over the world. Yes, we do have a much greater military in a lot of other aspects than what Russia does. Maybe not even so much in a ground invasion as it has been brought out by different experts on both sides of the aisle here. But when it comes to this new technology that Russia will deploy next year, the United States then will have a problem because they will have no uh, way to counter this type of technology that Russia has. So if Russia were to decide to do a preemptive strike on the U.S., say for the next decade, they would be able to do so and they would not have to worry about the threat faced to them. So, is it a possibility that in fact Ukraine and North Korea have been used as a decoy in order for the United States to be able to deploy certain types of missile defense systems closer to Russia's border for exactly that, a preemptive strike on Russia to try to bring them down before they have this system put into place in 2018. That's beginning to look more and more as a realistic possibility. Remember, the Ukrainian conflict all began because of a Maidan coup done by the CIA. Now, there's some I'm sure that would differ with me on that and say, well, the CIA doesn't do things like that. Well, why would Russia topple a government that is pro-Russian to begin with? President Yukonovich was very much pro-Russian. Russia had no problems there. But the destabilization of Ukraine became very evident. And of course, the country was destabilized and toppled and all blamed on Russian aggression, especially once Russia, well, you might say they annexed Crimea. Now, I differ with that because the Crimeans have been trying since the 90s to, to leave the Ukrainian government and go back to Russia, or at least their own independence. Well, this particular Maidan coup made it much easier for Russia, who has had their own naval base there, even under the Ukrainian government, because of a pro 
Ukrainian president okay so like I said no needing for Russia to topple Ukraine we have just been fed a bunch of lies by both the Western propaganda media machine you know CNN and all the likes of that group there and even the European media machine that was just pumping out like BBC and the other likes what the West was saying now you don't have to take my word for it I'm really just a nobody on that but maybe somebody like the likes of John Stockwell, and I'll play just a little portion of what John Stockwell here has to say, so you can kind of get a better idea that I'm not just saying things to be saying it of my own there. Listen to what John Stockwell speaks about that happened, of course, down in Central America and even in the eastern parts of the world, Asia, uh, excuse me, Vietnam, the, uh, even Korea back in the 50s, etc. Listen to what he says these things and rip through them and analyze them. Yeah, it looks like we got one other video running one second here. Let's just stop my, my mouth over here and let's get John Stockwell going. You find some shocking common denominators come out to you. Namely, for example, since 1954, we do not parachute teams into the Soviet Union to destabilize the country in a brutal way. Coincidentally, 1954 was the first year the Soviets developed their actual capability of actually dropping atomic weapons on the United States. Isn't that interesting? We do not parachute teams in to brutally destabilize the Soviet Union because in 1954 the Soviet Union developed ICBM capabilities. Now North Korea according to some experts, still do not have the capability of ICBMs to be launched on the United States. But then there are other experts who say North Korea does have that capability. But the United States also has the capability of taking down North Korea in a very rapid pace. But as we mentioned the other day, remember, the Chinese and the Russians have stated North Korea could spiral out of control into a third world war. Maybe this is the opportunity to do that preemptive strike and blame it on Russia because if Russia or China, either one, would come to North Korea's aid and not so much that they would attack the United States, but they would try to shoot down any of the missiles coming in because both Russia and China have moved to the border of North Korea their anti-defense missile systems. The Bulk Elm-3 been moved down there. We showed you that already happened. Lorenzo on his own channel there bringing this out before any of the mainstream media ever even touched it. Did Russia move the Bulk M3 down there to North Korea's uh, northern border there with uh, on e Russia's eastern front there? That's used to knock down what? Well, the Tomahawk cruise missiles. Then China followed suit as well. Actually, China, I believe, moved before Russia did, moved the S-300 advanced weapon system over on the northern border as well. Now, you have to understand, China nor Russia do not feel threats from North Korea that they're going to send missiles their way. And of course, the United States has stated that the Chinese moving 150,000 troops on the border there was, they're just getting ready to deal with a huge influx of refugees. Really? Well, I agree when it comes to the field hospitals that the Chinese built already on the border, but I don't agree with the fact that the Chinese are going to battle all these refugees with their soldiers. And I don't agree with that when the Chinese have moved even their ICBM missiles, the Donfang 41, on the northern border of North Korea. They're not planning on taking it down, and I don't agree with it when China's put all of their bombers on high alert. They're not there to take down North Korea. Remember, 1961, the covenant that China and North Korea have signed together to protect either or the other in the event of an attack. China is obligated to protect North Korea, and the United States knows that. But this is the time where Russia comes into play. Let's listen to a little bit more. Uh, for other reasons, we don't do these things in England, France, Sweden, Norway, Belgium, Switzerland, etc. These things are all done in countries of the third world where the governments don't have the power to force the United States to stop destabilizing the country and brutalizing their people. These six million people killed are people of the Mitumba Mountains of the Congo and the jungles of Southeast Asia and the hills of northern Nicaragua. Con now, isn't that interesting? All the destabilization that has been going on are in those third world countries that have no ability to affect the United States. Now, 
The United States argues this whole issue based on 9-11, and of course they say that it was all these terrorists, these Arabic terrorists that come in and took down the Twin Towers on 9-11. But there's enough evidence already to show that that was an inside job. And of course, what's really interesting is that supposedly the majority of all these terrorists come from Saudi Arabia. Well, why didn't we invade Saudi Arabia and destabilize Saudi Arabia instead? Why was it Iraq was the target? See, it doesn't make any sense. And then when it comes to Syria, what did Syria do that we had to destabilize this country as well? And as President Bashar al-Assad points out as well in an interview, he said there are 35 different nationalities fighting here against my government through al-Nusra, al-Qaeda, ISIS. And remember, President Barack Obama left a huge gift for ISIS over there in Mosul. All that U.S. military equipment that was picked up by them that he didn't want to bring back because it cost too much money to ship it back to America. That's a nonsense. He left them plenty of money in the banks and as we brought out how that this fulfilled prophecies in the book of Nahum and other prophecies as well. Unbelievable things that were happening. Zaphaniah included. Showing what these things were going to be. You know, even God knows how to tell you who's the guilty party in this, including that of Damascus in one of our recent videos that we did. I'll share that with you in the link description below, the one I did on Damascus. Do you good to watch that because Damascus, Isaiah 17 goes into detail of who will be involved in it, tells you even not only the fact that Damascus is taken away from being a city, but it also shows you that a wave of foreign immigrants would be the ones that would help cause that, and then a bunch of nations would enter into Damascus, into Syria, and destabilize the entire country. And of course, John Stockwell tells you this exactly himself. Now let me just back up and share something that John Stockwell does as well. See, this is not just John Stockwell talking. John Stockwell also is a former uh, director of operations of the CIA in Nicaragua. John Stockwell is going to give you a list of about six different former CIA uh, intelligence officers that have also come out as whistleblowers about the operations that the U.S. does in other countries. Listen to him, what he says here. ...and propaganda campaign against Vietnam until we talked ourselves into going into Vietnam to fight and two million people were killed. Again, read for yourselves. Read Bill Blum's book, The CIA of Forgotten History. Read Portrait of a Cold Warrior by Joseph Burkholder Smith, who was a CIA case officer in Southeast Asia. Read Fire in the Lake by Frances Fitzgerald, the daughter of Desmond Fitzgerald, the famous CIA chief of operations of Southeast Asia. Read Deadly Deceits by Ralph McGeehy, another case officer who served in Southeast Asia. Read Decent Interval by Frank Snap, who covered the period of time in Vietnam, 73, 75. He and I were colleagues there at that time. Or if you will, read my own book, In Search of Enemies by Norton, which remains the only insider's detailed account of the, of the inner functionings of a covert action. Or read Washington's War on Nicaragua by Holly Sklar, not written by an insider, but a remarkable detail on the Nicaraguan operation. Great There you have it for yourself. A whole list about four different CIA operatives that have actually come out or parents or children of the operatives there that tell you in detail the things that the United States is doing. So when we get, begin to look at Ukraine and we see that Russia says that this Maidan coup was orchestrated by the CIA and they reveal in their documentary Crimea the way home. Russia tells, President Putin himself tells about the intelligence that they have uh, of the CIA and the U.S. Embassy inside of Ukraine working with those different operatives to overthrow the government and to kill all the Russian, ethnic Russians that live inside of Ukraine. In fact, one of the phone calls, well, we listened to that ourselves, we've shared it here on Israeli News Live in the past there, the girl says that they have, she has friends in the West, she says we will nuke all of them and kill them all. This is the same thing, what John Stockwell is talking about that was going on in East Asia and Central America back years ago is happening now, not only through the Middle East, not only with Syria, uh, Egypt, uh, Libya, and of course those are biblically spoken about. I mean, my gosh, it's amazing that these are, you know, that God identifies that this happening there. And then everybody looks at Russia as the big boogeyman. Well, no doubt Russia will be posing a threat for the United States in 2018. And I think this is why the United States is bent on taking Russia down now at the cost of a nuclear war. So they have used both North Korea 
They've heightened up the threat with North Korea. Now, North Korea is going to be posing a threat very soon, if not already posing a threat for the United States in their rhetoric. But the United States knows they can take down North Korea very rapidly. They know they have the, uh, the ability to do so. But I think they ratcheted up all of the, um, uh, I think they've ratcheted up the threat of North Korea by all the military drills intentionally so that they would have a reason to move the THAAD intercontinental ballistic uh, uh, or the, you know, the anti-missile system there to North Korea in order to help knock down any of the Russian missiles that would be coming towards the United States in the event that the U.S. does a preemptive strike as we reported two days ago. And I will share that link in this video as well for you. All right, so this is what we're looking at. This is what's happening. And now Russia has a system be that will be ready in 2018. And of course, uh, Russia is considered the greatest threat that is on earth at this time right now. And U.S. military generals are saying exactly that. But this is the reason why, though. It is because of the RS-28 Sarmat ICBM that is a hypersonic disaster for the U.S. And they're right. It is a disaster for the U.S. Because maybe Russia intends either keeping the upper hand, uh, but wanting to have peace, but at the same time, Russia is also getting to the place to where they're not going to play games anymore either. And that would be a major threat for the U.S. for the next 10 to 15 years, according to Russian experts anyway. And the other day, I want to thank many of you guys that sent me the link. This was the very, or one of the articles here that I could not pull up because Google had it blocked. U.S. radars cover almost all of Russian territory, Russian MOD states here. The stationary radar systems of the U.S. missile and nuclear warning system cover all uh, possible trajectories of Russian ballistic missiles in the direction of the United States. Lieutenant General Viktor Poznikar, first deputy chief of the General Staff's main operation department, said. And there again, Russia considers this a threat, and Russia believes that there is a going to be a preemptive strike done on their country there. And uh, this here being the Reuters version here as well, Reuters also brought out that there is a major threat uh, with the THAAD. Listen to what one of the experts say about this right here. In the event of a strike from the north, Beijing has repeatedly stressed it doesn't want a heavy weapon system on its doorstep, but as Reuters' Greg Turode reveals, there's more to it than that. One of their big fears, is clear, is not the missiles attached to this missile defense system, but the radars that are very powerful, expand phased array radars, and they can peer up to 2,000 kilometers which would stretch deep into China's northeast, which is where China tests a lot of its long-range nuclear weapons. And Chinese scientists, some, are worried about the US getting far more information about individual missiles and the kind of missiles that they might use in a conflict. And not a lot of attention is given to this, but they're steadily improving their missile forces um, to create a very survivable nuclear force. The US has assured China it has nothing to now see, there's where another issue comes up as well when it comes to China. China also, now under President Trump, given, understandably, President Trump is also advancing now the U.S.'s nuclear capabilities because as he brought out in his campaign trail, the U.S. is way behind Russia and China in developing the technology for nuclear ICBMs and the U.S. needs to do something about that, which of course will create a whole new Cold War arms race unless the U.S. takes down uh, Russia, who's the main one that's in advance over this. China may not be so much the target here, but China may in inevitably get involved in the war or either try to stay out of it while the U.S. takes down Russia. But nonetheless, Russia does pose a threat in 2018, and this may be the reasoning behind all of this. And of course, as we can see uh, here on alreadyhappened.com, uh, that's got a hyphen between already and the word happened, Canadian military vehicles and equipment start to arrive in Latvia today. Uh, that's another troubling thing that we see that is happening. Uh, it is, again, a continued buildup on Russia's western border. So it's almost as if what's going to happen is if a nuclear war does uh, erupt, if the United States does a preemptive strike on Russia, they're going to try to at least take all the way into Moscow and break uh, the, the back of Russia in order to control that and then maybe take some of the territory uh, because, of course, many, many other parts of Russia would not survive after a nuclear uh, strike on the country. 
And uh, according to one of the analysts that, that was speaking that we brought out the other day, that Russia, or excuse me, the United States would do a preemptive strike, the first wave, have the ability to knock out anything that Russia does in a retaliatory measure and be ready for a second wave of strikes on the Russian Federation uh, if the if the United or excuse me if uh, the the Russians were to try to do, launch another attack that they believe that Russia would probably surrender at that time there. Uh, also, the constant build up to with North Korea getting ready for that particular area there, uh, which uh, inevitably will could end up spiraling out of control. Friendship in the uh, in uh, in Japan for naval drills as North Korea tensions rise. Uh, this ship here, the United States Marines have boarded this ship here. Uh, There's something that uh, we can see this by the video on the Twitter account have already happened here. The Marines boarding up on the French uh, ship there for these Navy drills that will be uh, ongoing here for uh, I think a space of about two weeks right there. Very interesting situation that's happening there. Uh, and also, it looks like we lost this here. In, in other news, just to quickly kind of give you a little something else that's going on as well, as RT is reporting that uh, the police protests are getting more and more violent inside of, uh, inside of Paris right now after a violent crash, and it doesn't want to be working with me right now, but there was a young teenager, 17-year-old young man that was on a four-wheeler that the police decided that they were going to try to stop this young man and in, as a result of a high-speed chase, the young man crashed into a bus and was killed by that. The people of uh, Paris are blaming the police for this, for, the, for his death, because of the high-speed chase. Uh, I would have to say that it was a very poor decision on the French police to do a high-speed chase with a young man on a four-wheeler like this. It's not worth it. I know in the United States, when I was a police officer, if you have a high-speed chase and it seems like it would be a risk to public life, uh, you are to stop the chase there. At least that was back in the 80s when I was a police officer, and uh, and I think that this would have been something that should have been done by the French as well. And one last brief look here, uh, this Russian article here on uh, uh, letna.ru, this came out a couple of days ago also, Mer actually yesterday, Angela Merkel is talking about working to form a uh, coalition to fight, bringing the nations together, a coalition to fight the different uh, uh, Middle Eastern terrorist groups that Russia considers also to be an enemy uh, and to fight them together. So it seems that Angela Merkel is more and more, she has also spoke recently about having the sanctions lift on, lifted on Russia. She is once again trying to build the German economy by getting these sanctions off Russia, getting uh, Germany more back involved with the Russian Federation. At the same time, though, uh, that's going to backfire because uh, the U.S. is wanting to deal with what they perceive to be a threat in 2018. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Erev Tov, uh, or excuse me, Shalom. It's not, Erev, it's not in the evening as of yet, but anyway, have a good day. Yom Tov. And uh, definitely consider supporting this broadcast here. Uh, we are asking a little bit more often. I apologize for that, uh, for your support, because we are trying to get ready to take Israeli News Live to uh, satellite television inside the United States into 20 million homes. And this would give us a chance as well to bring a balance in reporting in the West, something that could maybe, maybe help balance the situation that's going on. We're just one voice here, but it, maybe it would help balance uh, the reporting that goes on in the United States. And maybe some of the people that will be listening there might have a little bit of influence on what's being done in our government in the United States. I'm Stephen Benoon. Shalom. Have a great day. Don't forget, uh, right above our subscribe button on our channel here, you can donate there or IsraeliNewsLive.org. Shalom and have a good day.